Well, Mike's been, uh, you know, nine months on the sidelines for you after a, a tough outing the last time. So give me an idea what kind of the, the emotions been like, what the feelings been like, because I, I know that was a I know that was a tough one last time out. Uh, you know, you got to have a short term memory. So, you know, I just put it behind me. Um, I did my boohooing and, uh, you know, like I said, just put it behind me. I had a few injury, a few injuries to take care of. And, uh, you know, I'm back. It feels good. And, uh, you know, my my sole focus is Anthony Pettis. I might I have my brush ins with uh, Kevin Lee here at the P.I., but uh, you know, all in all, I'm, I'm very focused on Anthony right now. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, you decided to come out here to Las Vegas, obviously use this great facility, but you got to run into Kevin Lee every now and then. Do, do, how, how do those interactions work? Do you try to avoid each other? Ah, no, I don't try to avoid him. There's some hand gestures that have been thrown around, and, uh, you know, I don't like the guy, but I respect him as a competitor. And we actually had a little locker room discussion the other day and talked about a potential rematch in July. So, uh, you know. That's just that's just locker room talk, but you know it could happen, and it's been thrown around between him and I. So we'll see what happens. But you know, I just gotta stay focused on Anthony Pettis. That's that's where my mind's at. That's where my focus is, and uh, you know, I'm really excited for April seventh. What do you think about this matchup? I mean, Anthony, obviously a, a big name, uh, former champion, had some kind of mixed results lately. But when they came to this fight, I mean, was it one that excited you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm all about quality fights. You know what I mean? Some people are always asking me. You know, you don't. You haven't fought often. You fought twice in the last two years, and you know, like I said, I had a few injuries to take care of, and I got those behind me. But I'm all about quality right now. You know what I mean? I've, I got to the point in the UFC when I fought three times in a year and, and things of that sort, and I got myself in the rankings. So now I'm all about the quality fights, and here I am doing a media scrum before the biggest fight of the year against a former world champion. You know, that's that's a good mindset to have because it's gotten me into into a good fight. Pretty big time for the lightweight division. You talk about, I mean, there's a lot of big fights coming up, big names, big matchups. I mean, how do you see things kind of playing out right now? I know you're coming off a loss, but are you looking at kind of your your path to the top? Oh, yeah. I'm always looking at my path to the top. That's that's why I'm here. I'm not here to be second best. I'm here to be world champion. You know, when the day comes, I lose the drive to win a, to win a world title, then I'm just done. I mean, what's the point of being in the pinnacle of a sport if you're not striving to be the best at it? So... Um, you know, it's an exciting time to be a lightweight. April's a huge month. I mean, we got a lot of big matchups. I don't even got to name them. You guys already know. But if you want me to, Paul Felder, Ally Quinta, Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Kevin Lee, Edson Barboza, you know, that's a, that's a heavy load of lightweight fights, and that's really good. That's what this division needs. You know, we've had some, some stagnant-type moments with, you know, even back when Anthony was champion. You know, he had injuries that held the division up. And uh, this division has been kind of plagued with, inact you know, not inactivity, but just not movement in the, in the top five in the championship picture. So, um, you know, it's an exciting time to be a lightweight. I guess kind of touching on that, I mean, Conor McGregor does come back at, at the end of this year like most people think he will. I mean, do you feel like he has a right to step into the title shot and, and face the winner of Habib and, and Tony Ferguson? You know, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword for me. Yes, I say yes as a fan because the guy – was a two division champion at one point, you know what I mean? He's had to he's had to relinquish one title. We'll see if he's got to relinquish the other one. Um, but yeah, you know, he he's earned his right to go in and out. I mean, he's done big things in the sport, but the other side of me says no, because I'm gonna beat Anthony Pettis, I'm gonna jump in the top five, and I'm gonna say, screw you, you're not leapfrogging me. You can fight me for that spot again. You know, you should have stayed, you should have stayed champion, you should have stayed active, and uh, you know, like I said, it's a double edged sword. It's hard to say. It's hard to put my thumb on that one. I know you're not, you're not looking ahead of this fight, but I mean, I, I also know that you're kind of a fan and, and you, you think about things the way they lay out. James Vick is a guy that keeps keeps calling you out, calling you out. I mean, is he a guy that's in your future at all? Does that fight make any sense if you win here? If you knock someone out, would you want to rematch him? Exactly. Next question. <laughs> Give me your plans for 2018. How do you see this? How do you see this year laying out? Uh, going undefeated for the year. You know, that's really right now. I'm in the best place I've been in my whole career. You know, I'm here at the UFC PI, not just for this scrum. I've done my whole camp here. Um, my body's healthy. This is the best I've ever been going into a camp and, or going into a fight. And I know it's so cliche to say every guy's like, this is the best version of myself, blah, blah, blah. But this really is. You know what I mean? I'm around a world-class staff that's pushing me to the limit, but also making sure I don't break myself, which happens. You know, that's something that I tend to have a problem with. So, um, you know, I feel like this is the best product I'm going to bring into the Octagon on April 7th. So, you know, this is a really exciting time for my career, and you know, my goal is to end this end this year at number one contender. You know, I got to go make a statement. I got to go beat Anthony better than Poirier did. I got to go do better than the other guys. That's a tall order. We're talking Max Holloway, Rafael dos Anjos. We're talking some big name guys. I got to do it better than them. So, you know, that's the plan. Number one contender by December. Ooh, that rhymes. Number one contender by December. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kiesa time. It's Kiesa time. <laughs> Just recently, you were uh, front row at the WWE event at Ronda Rousey's first appearance. How did that come about, being there with uh, Cormier and 
Travis? Uh, so my awesome manager, Daniel Rubenstein, manager extraordinaire, who happens to be good friends with Daniel. Um, I'm a big fan of Daniel as well. We always have good interactions in passing, but um, Daniel arranged me to, to go hang out with, with DC and his team while they were here uh, filming for Tough. So went and hung out with them, and he brought me out to dinner and was just like, hey, you want to go to a WWE event? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I've never been to one. And, you know, I was, I was all about the Attitude Era as a kid. So, you know, it was like something on my bucket list to, to check off. And it wasn't until we were, like, walking into the arena that they started talking about Ronda. And I'm like, what, what about Ronda? Like, dude, she's signing her contract tonight. I was like, whoa. Like, I didn't realize we were going to this type of magnitude of an event. You know what I mean? So it was, uh, it was such a cool experience. And, and to be there with DC and his guys, they're just – those guys are a riot, dude. I had a blast. What what is uh, the atmosphere like compared to compared to an MMA event? Uh, to me, it's this sound. This sounds gonna, this is gonna sound bad, but it, it's it does. You gotta let me see this answer through. It's kind of childish, but not in a bad way. It's just like it's good fun. You know what I mean? There's not like. You know, when you're at a UFC event, there's new, there's bad nerves as to who's going to win. You know what I mean? This is real fighting. These guys, like, there's nothing scripted, nothing planned. Like, these guys got to go slug it out. And someone's going to get their hand raised. Um, so being there, it's like, yeah, in the back of my mind, I know it's scripted, but I just feel like a kid, and I'm just kind of letting go, you know, and, and just having a good time. And uh, I got to, you know, Roman Reigns was, like, 10 feet away from him, and he's, like, 10 feet tall, and I was just like, screw you, Roman Reigns, like, talking crap. So, <laughs> being, you know, I, I really engaged in the event, and it was, it was a blast. I could definitely see myself going to another one. What do you think about Ronda crossing over and, and other fighters doing stuff like that? Good for Ronda, and good for the other fighters. You know, if that's something that they want to do, and, you know, this – you know, MMA is a good platform to move on to something like that. We've seen collegiate wrestlers like Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar make that move and, and be very successful at it. But, I mean, for Ronda, I mean, good for her. I mean, some people try to talk crap about, you know, the end of her career and her fights with Holly and Amanda. But, you know, I tell those people to screw off. You know what I mean? She's done a lot for the sport. You know, she had a great run as a champion. And good for her to move on to another avenue. And, uh, you know, she's going to be very successful. At it. She's going to make a buttload of cash, and she's going to have a lot of fun. I'm happy for her. That's awesome. What was it like watching wrestling next to DC? Because supposedly he's a very exciting man. <laughs> it was awesome, man. He, he's, uh, I was kind of feeding off his energy, so he was just pumped up, and, you know, he's talking trash to guys, and so I, like, totally jumped on board, and, you know, and if, if those guys actually took anything I said to heart, I would have just been like, I'm with him, bro. You got to deal with this guy. So <laughs> it was fun, man. Is it true that your manager is helping you sharpen up your wrestling technique for this camp? Uh, you know, no, I try to get him out there on the mats, but I don't think he wants anything to do with, with my head snapping and, the, you know, my head draw series. So I'm letting him, uh, I'll let him, I'll let him bask in his glory days. Mr. Division one. I see you over there. <laughs> last thing, last thing for me too. What, what is your prediction for a uh, Habib and Tony Ferguson? How do you see that one going down? Well, here's my educated opinion. And I think this is going to be pretty damn accurate. You got Tony Ferguson, who has possibly the most weapons out of anybody at lightweight, maybe in the UFC. I mean, the guy is as dynamic as it gets. Striking, elbows, knees, grappling, wrestling. I mean, he, he really covers the bases in terms of the, the skill set of a mixed martial artist. He's got way more weapons, way more weapons than Khabib. But Khabib has the equalizer. We're talking that wrestling and that pressure. I mean, it's unparalleled. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that that, like I said, that's the equalizer in the fight. I think that Khabib's going to get him down, but I think that he's going to pay for it. I think that, you know, Tony on his back is a very dangerous man. We saw in the Kevin Lee fight, we've seen in a lot of his fights, the guy can throw elbows, he can throw up submissions with minimal effort. Very, very busy on bottom. So, you know, I see, you know, I don't see Tony really trying to stop the takedowns. You know, Tony's 10th planet, he's a 10th planet black belt, well accredited grappling, and, uh, you know, I don't really see him trying to stuff the takedowns, bless you. And, uh, but, he, you know, Khabib's going to pay for it. But, that being said, I still think Khabib wins 3-2, possibly split decision. I think Tony's going to win some rounds off his back. Tony wins. I would be surprised, but I just it's hard to, you know, I just don't know if, if Tony's, Tony has great grappling, but I just don't know if it's the right grappling style to beat Khabib. I think to beat Khabib, you got to maintain the scramble once you hit the floor and try to, you know, spin around and scramble into a dominant position. I just don't think, I think Tony's going to accept the guard, and, you know, rightfully so, he's got a dangerous guard, so... Uh, I don't think that's a bad thing, but I don't think it's the best thing.